we'll just wait a little bit while we get some people coming in. Thank you very much for joining us today. I love when I see the numbers rise of the participants. So good morning, everyone, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you're located. Thank you for standing by and welcome to the live Invisible Investor Update webinar being recorded today, June 9th, 2020, and will be available to watch on Invisible social media channels. Please follow us to update the news. Invisible aims to be a leading company in the merging printed and flexible electronic sector, given the cost and power consumption advantages over conventional electronics, printed electronics are a vital enabler of mass adoption of the Internet of Things and smart objects. Invisible's interactive printed graphic solution solve the need for ultra low power, mass deployable, and easy to use electronic displays and indicators for everyday smart objects and IoT devices and ambient intelligent intelligence services surfaces. Invisible offers a mix of services, materials, and technology to brand owners developing smart objects and products. Invisible Interactive... Oh, there we go. We have a nice little video for you. Invisible Interactive is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture Board under the symbol YNV and the OTCQB YNF, YNV YF and Frankfurt 1XNA. Invisible's 2019 financial results were issued on June 1st, 2020 and the various news releases discussed in this webinar are all available on CDAR. Our presenters today are Yanni Mikhail Cousteau, Invisible's Chief Executive Officer, Raghu Das, CEO, ID Tech X, Dr. Carlos Pinheiro, CTO, Invisible, Dr. Inesh Henriques, COO and co-founder, Invisible, and Tommy Hoogland, VP of Sales and Marketing at Invisible. Now I will go over the forward-looking statements. Bear with me now. This webinar may contain certain forward-looking information and statements about inv Invisible Interactive Inc. Such forward-looking information and statements are identified by the use of words and expressions such as projected intended leads to provide an estimate and similar words. And expressions, such forward-looking information includes but is not limited to statements with respect to the development of products, sales growth, and global expansion, the impact of the company's products and services on customers and marketplaces, future financial or operating performance of the company, the ability to capitalize on future opportunities and estimates regarding the size and scope of our target market and the potential for growth. These forward-looking statements and any assumptions upon which they are based reflect our current judgment regarding the direction of our business and include but are limited to the efficiency and successfully recognizing operational efficiencies, developing new technologies, success successfully identifying and capturing new customer opportunities, and capitalizing on current customer opportunities, and continuing to expand our sales channels. As a reminder, you may submit your questions through the panel at the bottom of your screen, and our speakers will answer as many as possible if there is enough time at the end of the webinar. And now I'll pass it over to Yanni. Thank you, Alicia. Um, hello, everyone. Let me see if I know how to share my screen. Um, I hope everyone has been doing well this these past few weeks and months. It's been it's been exceptional times for for all of us. Hope you and your families have been keeping safe. I'm <clears throat> I'm delighted that we we have such a strong audience uh, again attending this this webinar. We had over 100 people signed up in advance, and as said, this will be made available for viewing later on, on YouTube. Um, our webinar series has been very, very successful, and it's been great in these times where we cannot travel to meet people to be able to attract such a nice crowd. My talk 
I will give a quick uh, overview of, of Invisible and discuss some of the highlights uh, of last year and, and, and this year up until this date. All the materials that I'm showing are available online. Uh, they're uh, available through our press releases. Uh, they're also available uh, in our investor pages on our website. Um, I'm not going to reread that. Very briefly, why we exist as a company, the intelligence is coming into everything. And rigid conventional forms of electronics are not suited uh, for this expansion. What we have been doing as a company from our founding is bringing everyday objects to life, uh, benefiting people in an increasingly smart and connected world. And while, how we have been doing that is we have been utilizing printed electronics to bring these simple interfaces that are very easy for people to, to comprehend. And furthermore, these are printed. So this is a technology that is truly scalable. When you can start to print these in different parts of the globe using these special inks that uh, our company has developed and, and, and delivers. So it's intelligence everywhere bringing that human interface to face of IoT and really stressing on the fact the manufacturing is scalable to high volumes. It's all based on printing, using relatively conventional printing techniques that are found around the globe and, and, and using materials, base materials such as papers and, and plastics. Um, the displays themselves have a lot of uh, advantages. They're ultra low power, the lowest power consuming uh, display technology that we're aware of. They can be shaped, uh, molded into different sizes, cut into different uh, forms, uh, taken inside of plastics into different materials. You have displays that are multi-use, you have some that are only single use. Very diverse technology. Uh, we position this technology between the electronic display world and the printed graphics world. We talk about bringing graphics, printable graphics to life. There's are starting to be sensors everywhere. You have several of them on your body right now. If you have a wallet in your pocket, even more. You have, you have, you have chips and sensors um, in the scale of trillions. They're talking of a trillion sensor economy. What we do, is where that intelligence is in your credit cards or wherever, we're bringing the visual interface to that. Up to the point that you can use these in smart labels that can be attached to, to shipments such as packaging. In this example, uh, this smart label uh, has inside a shock detector and it can detect if the package has been dropped and, and, and visually then indicates that, that um, something may have gone wrong. Our company is focused initially on these three main sectors, logistics and retail, healthcare and wellness, and premium consumer products. We'll come back to, to some examples um, uh, later in, in these talks. Um, in times of COVID, there has been also a lot of uh, creativity around uh, where such visual indicators, displays can come into use. And it's great to have, have uh, different companies, uh, product designers approach us with concepts um, where, where the visual display provides truly valuable information to, to consumers, helping them in these times. Of course, what you see here, many are still in, in concept mode, but we're, we're, we're delighted to see this level of creativity. Um, for, for all companies, these past months have been challenging. Uh, certainly we, when we had our planning last year, we could not foresee this happening. So our plans have been changed. But the, the nice thing is there has been a lot of momentum. Some client cases have been lost, other clients have emerged. For us, it's been actually very exciting times. A um, lot of new demands in the, in the society going forward. Um, 
more local production of products, brand protection, quality assurance, and of course, everything related to health. Our technology going forward will scale to, to a wide range of different uh, end applications. The, the nice thing we've achieved during last year is we've introduced our first ink kits that are now available to product designers. Practically anyone now can purchase our, our ink kits and start realizing their first product demonstrators, proving their concepts. And what is our business model? Our business model is we provide everything you need to get started with this printable display, electronic display technology. We have, during the past two years after going public, we have built the capabilities um, from design, prototyping, um, to, to high volume manufacture. You'll get to meet members of our management team in our different locations, and then you'll get a sense of the work we do there for clients. And again, highlighting these ink kits, uh, they're, we're selling them already, display kits, we're seeding the markets, we're spreading the message, this technology is here, it's here today, it's available for purchase. Um, brief corporate overview, we are headquartered in Vancouver, um, but most of our operations today are, are based in Europe, uh, partly due to the fact that there has been a lot of printed electronics pioneering work uh, taking place uh, in, in Europe. Our, our facilities we have in, in Portugal, we have our design um, prototyping sheet to sheet printing. In Freiburg, Germany, we have our inks lab. That's where we do the ink formulations. Um, and in, in Sweden, we'll talk more about this, we have our roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing capability. Um, in terms of markets, we'll get to hear, I'm delighted to have Raku Das from ID TechX joining us. They are the leading market researcher in our space. <clears throat> He'll talk about um, organic printed electronics in general. Um, we follow their reports very closely, but at the same time, we also look at the printing uh, world. We see ourselves bringing new tools to these, these thousands of printing locations around the planet who are looking for new business opportunities. And we see ourselves and printed electronics carving out great new uh, business opportunities um, for the printing value chain. Some milestones and targets that we have com communicated. Um, since going public, we have built these capabilities to deliver. Um, you will hear more about these capabilities. And I wanna thank all our investors for, for, for your continued investments, uh, support to us. Um, these funds have been put to good use. Um, we have that full services capability. Looking ahead this year and next year, we are looking to, to scale. We're looking to, to go from more and more from prototyping for clients, which are now under confidentiality agreements to a large extent. So unfortunately, we're not able to disclose all the names of the clients that we're working with, but we hope these will rapidly reach a phase where we can publish the products that we're working on with, with our clients and bring them in scale to market. Furthermore, our aim is to go from providing these services to a future where we sell the designers, the tools for designing uh, these products, the inks for the manufacturer and the quality control. And we have now systematically embarked on building our product portfolio. So quickly, a review of some of the highlights from last year. Uh, and Alicia, if I start running over time, give me a warning. Um, some highlights from last year. We announced a collaboration with Fraunhofer. Those of you in Europe will have heard of this name. They're the biggest um, um, research institute in Europe. They have uh, some uh, massive um, developments uh, in research in electrochromics. We're partnering with them in that field. Uh, we announced uh, customer relationships in smart labels, security, diagnostics. Um, the big news in August 
last year was the acquisition of Consensum Production. Uh, Consensum Production um, operate, operates or operated a, a roll-to-roll manufacturing line in, in Linköping, Sweden. And there's an image there. We'll be visiting Linköping later on in, the, in this webinar. But what happened with this acquisition is we leapfrogged into roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing. We gained business by being now a, a, a contract manufacturer of printed electronics for roll-to-roll, -roll, but also we now have the facilities in which we can take the electrochromic, the electronic display into high volume manufacture. We acquired that in, in, in August, uh, renamed it uh, Invisible Production. Um, if we had built this from scratch, we would have required way more funding and way more time. So this was a very nice fit for, for us. We made a couple of uh, very good appointments last year. Petter Stramberg, who, who you meet later, uh, is uh, head of product management, putting emphasis to, to building our product platform. And then in November, in November Tommy Haglund um, joined um, as our vice president of sales and marketing. In November last year, we also strengthened our boards. We, board, we'll get to meet uh, Michael and Leif later today. They bring us a lot of uh, valuable experience, diverse perspectives uh, to, to the company. Um, we announced uh, roll to roll client agreements in the sense Epishine. We announced a partnership with Electron Inks, bringing our displays into educational consumer electronics. A few words about that later. We announced a client partnership with Identiv, bringing our visual displays into smart labels for, for data logging um, uh, of temperature tracking. More about that later. To end the year 2019, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we were able to, to go from practically no revenues to exceeding 300 thousand dollars Canadian in sales. I, I feel we are off to a, a good start. Um, this year, our internal target, not our forecast, but our internal target is to exceed one million Canadian dollars uh, in, in revenues. Um, let's, let's hope we can meet that target. I think we are on very good, very good track. You'll hear about what's happening in, in sales and marketing. Plus, you'll see some of the releases we made recently. Also, with the acquisition of, of, of Consensum, um, our assets are now, now much stronger. For more details, go to our website, and, and, and through there, you can find links to the MDNA and financial statements. This year was off to an excellent and fast start. We attended several industry conferences. We made joint demonstrators with Happy or Not. You may have seen these feedback terminals at the airports when you used to fly. Uh, we demonstrated how these feedback terminals can go practically everywhere. We announced in Roll to Roll Lingna Energy, uh, wood-based battery, um, as a client. Um, okay, there's a typo there. Uh, we announced a collaboration with NXN Licensing on new colors for electrochromics, plus a, a, a prototyping project for a Fortune 500 company in the medical and diagnostics devices sector. Um, then recently, we announced the acquisition of the electrochromic display business of RDOT AB from Gothenburg, uh, Sweden. And what, what is happening here is we, are, we significantly strengthened our sales and marketing team, brought new assets for digital marketing, um, and increased our client base. Tommy will talk more to, to the RDOT acquisition, but it was all about strengthening our sales. And most recently, we were delighted to announce a co collaboration with Ebonic. This is a world-leading specialty chemicals group with over 13 billion euros in annual sales. 
And they have been uh, developing a printed battery technology. And we were able to demonstrate that our displays can be combined with these printable batteries. And the beauty of all of this is printing of these batteries uses the same technology of printing as we use for printing of displays. We're taking systematic steps to printing the entire system on the same film and substrate. So our client base is growing. Uh, have, have, have many, many clients and, and uh, have to say thank you to all our clients. It's been wonderful through these, these uh, weeks and months now with COVID to, to, to have had that momentum together with you. Our partnerships uh, are, are growing as well. We'll hear more about that. A few words. I know I'm probably already exceeding my time. So we have, have been building our management team. We have been uh, strengthening our board. I always like to also refer to our advisory board, uh, the diversity and experience through there. Dr. Michael Okorafor, a, a veteran in the branded uh, packaging world, Coca-Cola, Heinz, now on in McCormick, responsible for sustainability and packaging. Harlan Biker, who has made the most influential inventions in the field of electrochromics. Gentex is a company to look up if you want to see where Harlan's work has gone. And Harry Coppola, one of the pioneers in, in, in printed electronics. Um, his initiatives have led to tens of startups. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to have such a strong team uh, in Invisible. And I, I thank all our management team, um, board members and advisory board members for your very, very strong active contribution. All right, um, next on the agenda, I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking. We had a promise to, to um, give an overview of, of um, the webinar series that we've been, we've been running. So before we go to Raku, let me, let me um, if Felicia, you give me control back. Okay. Right, thank you guys. Um, all right, can you see my screen? No. No. Why is it not? This sometimes happens, sorry. We are very experienced with Zoom these days, but uh, still, there's always a little issues. All right, we were to have run a video for four minutes. The sound does not come, come true uh, through, through the system, so I will quickly explain some of the highlights. All of these videos are available through our YouTube channel, so go take a look. They're all there, uh, just giving some highlights. Our first session was on printed electrochromics. By the way, why did we start this series? Many exciting events that we had planned for, uh, our, our marketing push for the spring, obviously had to be canceled. Um, we wanted to find a way to, to engage with our clients. And, and that's why we started this webinar series. And I'm delighted to say we've had, we've had viewers from now over 45 countries. Truly global audience. We were, we were amazed. We, we first got a package for 100 seats. We had to increase it to 500 seats because of, of the, the, the high viewership. So this uh, first one series was looking at our core, printed electrochromics. We started off with, with uh, our CTO, Carlos Pinero, talking about where is electrochromics today and where is it, it heading with our developments in printable electrochromics, really expanding the market for that. Um, the next talk was from Georgia Tech. Uh, this was a, a, a look from a scientific perspective of how new colors are coming into electrochromics. Georgia Tech has been doing some fundamental work in, in, in electrochromic colors um, that, that um, allows our field to, to expand um, electrochromics into new, new color spaces. Um, our partner, NXN IP, um, their, their uh, CEO, John Quine, gave an excellent talk about how we're working together, um, offering these new colors 
that they've licensed from Georgia Tech, bringing those into the inks and the devices that we develop and, and bring to, to clients. And in his talk, he mentioned work on, on color changing fingernails, color changing furniture, flexible displays. Um, he, he mentioned a wide range of application possibilities of, for the work that we're doing together. Um, then we had a talk from Ashley Colley um, from the University of Lapland. Um, we are working in this group. Uh, it's, a, it's a nearly 7 million euro um, EU co-funded project that is introducing electrochromics to the design community. Giving designers a chance to, to learn how to work with this new emerging technology. And um, you'll hear more from the, about this from, from uh, Carlos, but uh, the, the nice thing about this, this project has been that they're carrying out these workshops around the globe. So many people are getting exposure now to this technology. All right, that was the first session. Second session was focused on smart labels. So logistics, retail, big focus for us. Label type applications is a, is a big, big field. Why? RFID. RFID, this is when you have your contactless uh, payment card. The chip inside is, is RFID. Um, RFID is now, now everywhere. It is in many ways a, a, a backbone for a lot of the Internet of Things applications. Claire Swedberg, uh, a reporter, a journalist who works for uh, uh, RFID Journal, the leading journal in RFID field, talked about that field and, and her insights on the hot topics. Food supply chain, healthcare industry, uh, and that's where we have been identifying business opportunities for ourselves as well. Um, then we had a, had a very nice talk from our partner, Identiv. Um, essentially talking about where do Identiv and we work together. And that area is very much healthcare. Um, Vera introduced Identiv's um, temperature tracking label and the entire solution, and how our visual interface is a core element now when they take the, this technology and their, their product to the healthcare sector. If you really want to understand how our technology is being put to use today, take a look at, at this uh, talk by Identiv. Um, then our very own Samuel Strandberg um, has our business development, 22 years of experience in the RFID sector, talked about how, where the value of our visual indicators is in the RFID space. We call it RFID plus. And it's really those places where you don't need or want to have reader infrastructure, but you just want to look at a label and see is everything okay or not? All right, I'll try to pick up speed a little. Third session was focused on bridging industry needs with, with what we're doing in printed electronics. We had a talk from Andrew Dent from Material Connection. These are a New York, uh, New York City headquartered um, um, new materials library. Product designers, from global brands can go into their facilities and hands on get a feel for these new materials. He came and he, he shared some insights on where he sees opportunities for printed electronics and our technology as well. And, and certainly one big trend is smart everyday objects and IoT. And again, healthcare came up. I mentioned earlier our collaboration with Electron Inks. Um, Brett, their CEO, came to talk about it. They offer these kits not only to schools and education, but also to product designers who want to get to, to learn how to work with this new technology. And they, they have started now to include our displays into the kits that they sell. 
um, very, very um, um, engaging way to get our technology again into hands of designers. Nice distribution networks. Our head of design, Jarno, then talks in general about designing with, uh, with um, printed electronics, uh, printed electrochromics, and um, yeah, if you want to learn how to design with uh, our technologies, take a take a, a view of his talk. Finally, last session that we had, I believe, a couple of weeks back, there we talked about printed systems, rise. Um, um, Applied Research Institute in Sweden gave the talk and, and talked a little bit about what's happening in Sweden in the ecosystem. Um, great applications emerging where there are needs and demands for our displays as well. Um, we announced the collaboration with Ivonic and Ivonic uh, talked about how their printable battery is providing the energy autonomous uh, systems for IoT. And finally, we had our head of sales, our vice president of sales, talk a little bit about how these um, technologies came together and what we're offering in Sweden. All right. That was supposed to have been a, a video, not me talking, but I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, Let's go forward. Alicia. Thank you very much, Yanni. That was very informative. Now I would like to introduce Raghu Das, CEO of ID TechX. ID TechX is a leading independent market research business intelligence and events organizer in the field of organic printed and flexible electronics. Over to you. Thank you very much, Alicia and Yanni Mikhail. Hopefully you can see my screen okay. And uh, hello to everyone who's listening, wherever you may be. So um, as I was introduced, I'll give you a brief overview as to where we are with the big printed flexible electronics market, which is very broad. It covers many different technologies, but hopefully the next 10 minutes, get a current view as to the, the size of it, where it's going, and some of the opportunities that are arising from the current COVID-19 issues as well. So just firstly, one slide about ID Tech X. We are an independent uh, market analyst firm, and we focus on looking at a range of emerging technologies. We've been looking at print electronics for 20 years now, so we've got a lot of experience looking at the entire value chain, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's uh, oversupplied, what's undersupplied. And in this presentation, hopefully I can give you um, a fairly detailed view as to where we think the opportunities are and what is really the current status market. So let's start off with the big picture first. In 2019, the entire market size covering all the printed flexible and organic electronics, as you can see here, was substantial. It was over $37 billion based on our definitions of uh, the different technologies we include. The lion's share of that is in displays. That's mostly OLED displays on glass for now. But there's many other displays in that. For example, a half billion dollar market includes the e-paper type displays. And of course, we also have printed displays and other flexible displays, including that from Invisible, which are emerging. They're small as yet as a market, but going into new sectors that existing displays aren't really tackling. We then also have billion dollar segments for sensors, for conductive ink, and there's still many emerging and small sectors which are growing. And over the coming years, we expect to see these growing quite strongly in some cases. That includes sectors for flexible logic, uh, flexible batteries, e-textiles, and so on. So as you can see from this single snapshot, it's really a very diverse industry. It's not just one type of technology. There's many different types of technologies, enabling materials, and they're all at different points of maturity and also of market size. So I think one of the things that I'm really excited about the technology, and I think we see a lot of interest in this technology, is the new form factor which are enabled thanks to this huge toolkit now of components and all the enabling materials and the equipment as well. And that is changing the way we think of electronics, you know, moving it away from rigid boxes of electronics, we've all been accustomed to for the last 60 plus years, 
um, into enabling great invigoration of products and reinventing how humans and consumers engage with electronics by changing the shape of it. So moving away from rigid glass structures, things like displays, to flexible, foldable versions, stretchable versions in the form of things like e-textiles, and even embedding um, these electronics, whether it's capacitor switches or displays, into 3D surfaces. So I think this is um, a huge opportunity to uh, really invigorate products and come up with new concepts that weren't really feasible before. And I think part of the challenge and opportunity associated with all of this is that in many cases, we're not just replacing an existing component. Uh, the suppliers in the industry are having to create new products because those products weren't feasible before and so they haven't been thought of before. And so they're developing products which uh, consumers uh, will find desirable and which will they want. But from a market analyst point of view, it's quite challenging because those consumers don't yet know they want those products because they just don't exist. And so forecasting some of this um, is, is difficult, but it's something we've been doing for a long time now. We can certainly see the many different trends and opportunities to improve. It will result in large new markets being created completely from scratch. You know, in model electronics is one example of that. Markets for things like e-textiles, where e-textiles barely existed five years ago, uh, moving to a multi-hundred million dollar market in 2029. And if we look in particular at electrochromic displays, obviously that's the area that Invisible are focused in, in addition to providing complete systems. This is the ID Technics view as to what the market size could be if we look at 2025. Again, another example of a market being created pretty much from scratch because this is a new enabling technology which will go somewhere between sort of a high end TV and cell phone type displays uh, and also um, the huge volume, you know, static printed graphics sector, tackling a fairly wide space area where those the types of display technologies haven't been available before. And it's not just about form factor, but also um, different applications see different needs in terms of power consumption, um, how these are made and integrated with driving components. And I think Invisible will be telling you a bit more about that as well. But overall, we see the market for electrochromic displays and systems moving to about $80 million, that's US dollars, um, over the next 10 years to uh, 2030. So I want to look now at some of the applications where a lot of the flexible electronics, including uh, printed and flexible displays, we think will have an impact. And one area in the very short term, but also moving out to the long term where we see strong traction is within the uh, healthcare sector. You know, before COVID-19, there was an increasing trend to move to uh, electronic skin patches, moving away from uncomfortable devices, uh, such as those on the top left there, to devices which you could wear as a patch. And they would have the benefit of not only being more comfortable for the consumer, but also taking data points um, at a very frequent basis, and therefore really capturing and identifying uh, the problems that that particular uh, user was experiencing. And we see the opportunity for this continue to grow and somewhat accelerated by the current COVID-19 crisis as well. So here's a few examples of um, a number of organizations working together. And here they've repurposed a, a flexible skin patch, which was initially being developed um, for those with heart failure and epilepsy to monitor them. But it's now been repurposed and it's monitoring those with uh, respiration, also monitoring their heart rate and temperature targeted towards coronavirus patients. And the problem this is fixing is, of course, we all hear of the issues of care homes and other facilities where the, the act of sending someone in to measure their temperature exposes them to risk of getting the virus. And so here uh, with COVID-19, we see a strong use case for these types of skin patches to increasingly be used. Um, and this already is now going through clinical trials. If there is another peak of this towards the end of the year, um, this can be used pretty to save lives and prevent the spread of virus by remotely monitoring the health status of patients. And indeed, if we look at the wearable technology sector, this is another area that ID TechX looks at, and there's a lot of overlap between this and the flexible electronics sector. Um, you know, as with uh, a number of mature industries, particularly in the electronics business, um, sales in 2020, we think will be somewhere between the 2018 and 2019 level as a short-term blip. But despite that, um, we still see strong growth in skin patches. In fact, it's the only sector which continues to grow throughout this uh, pandemic, 
the reason I mentioned earlier. So moving from healthcare, another example of an exciting industry which is changing is retail. So if we look at the adoption of RFID in retail, and uh, Yanni Mikkel uh, has already highlighted how Invisible has been involved, um, RFID is now a market of over 20 billion tags um, as of last year. And just over half of those are going into apparel tagging. And many retailers are now so sold on the benefits, they're looking to really accelerate this. And I think with everything going on around COVID-19, um, I expect that in the medium term, we'll continue to see that acceleration. For example, in Japan a few years ago, they announced that by 2025, they expect to be tagging 100 billion items sold in supermarkets. That's eradicating barcodes, eradicating people on tills, so those people can do higher value things, um, and just automating the checkout process. And we're increasingly seeing now our team being used within the supply chain to monitor um, these different items, and particularly uh, as people you know, not able to go into retail stores as easily, it's becoming increasingly important to have strong visibility and track and trace of where everything is in through supply chains. So RFID has been sold um, and you know, the business case has been sold very strongly in apparel and it's now increasingly moving into other areas of logistics within retail. It's not just also about um, the um, logistics side. If we look at printed electronics in smart packaging, here consumer brands you know, are looking not just to improve their supply chain and know where everything is, but they actually want to increase sales. And print electronics enables a mechanism to do that. Here you can see many different examples. Some of these, most of these are being commercial um, over the years, incorporating printed displays of one type or the other on packaging, um, which is used to um, really connect with the consumer and ultimately differentiate that product. You know, it's the Potter and Gamble famous moment of truth uh, being uh, that you do something that uh, people look at your package and then you're halfway there to selling it to them. And so uh, most recently, we've had Coca-Cola um, integrate OLED lighting onto their labels, which you can see here. And it was just a couple of weeks ago, Lally Tech X held a virtual conference on print electronics. We had someone from Coca-Cola present, and we had a record number of attendees. Uh, we had over 2,000 people register for the webinar. Uh, we've had many hundred more view it on demand. So I think it's an indicator as to the increasing level of interest we see in this. So moving on, we've looked at displays, uh, we've looked at um, healthcare, retail, but there's also huge material opportunities going forward as well. If we look at the conductive ink market, that's just the value of the ink paste that's being used in a variety of industries. That's a $2.3 billion market in 2019, growing by about a billion dollars over 10 years. And here the mature sectors, such as silicon PV, will continue to be a strong user of that. But like many other types of components, materials within print electronics, we see you know, a lot of new sectors, a lot of new growth coming. For example, with uh, 5G, there's an increasing need for better shielding for more components. And that's an area where this technology can add value. And even things like electric vehicles, for things like heat management. And others are coming up with completely different ideas. Uh, you've already heard a little bit about um, Circuit Scribe, who create pens. With conductive inkings, you can draw circuits much easier for a child to do that rather than you know, even picking up a soldering iron or, uh, or similar sort of you know, breadboard and putting wires in. So, um, so it's, it's just a, a dynamic and vast array of different opportunities, which also poses, I think, a problem to suppliers as to which to focus on. There's so many things that you can tackle, and there's also challenges to what you start doing first. So if we look at um, the impact that COVID-19 is having on this sector, I think in some of the more mature areas, such as OLED displays on glass and in the PV sector, then yes, this is going to have for sure a short term impact. And we see the sales of things like OLED displays on glass go back to sort of 2018 type levels. But it's also, on the other hand, for some of the more emerging components, creating more of a demand than we've seen before. Examples include some of the things I've mentioned already, such as remote patient monitoring, where there now is you know, a really strong need not to have close contact with patients that monitor them from home. Other examples include um, automation and tracking technologies for increased online retail demand, that's RFID, but also RFID with sensors and as needed appropriate indicators. 
On the bottom left, you see a diagnostic um, sensor system. This is using Prince Electronics. We even seeing the materials such as copper inks uh, being deployed as antibacterial surfaces, which are 3D printed, and others on the bottom right there creating large area sensors um, to alert people of getting too close in a retail store with this little traffic light system. That whole map there has a printed pressure sensor beneath it. So all of these things are in, uh, in use, and um, I think uh, you know, COVID-19, as, as tragic as it is, um, I think will create demand for these more innovative technologies um, in the short term, and I think really accelerate their adoption to some degree. So I'd like to finish off by um, addressing another point moving beyond components, and more of a um, supply chain issue, and an issue which I think has been with the industry, at least since I've been looking at it, and it's been you know, 20 years now, as I've mentioned. So some eight years ago at IDTechX, we looked at the thousands of supplies and print electronics that we know quite well, and, um, and looked at what they do in the value chain. And you can see the figures here at the time, around 60%. We're using all the different types of materials and equipment to make some type of component. About a third of the players were involved in uh, material supply of some sort and so on. But what we thought then is that there are very few who were integrating and developing products um, for um, end use. Uh, so many were trying to sell a flexible battery or sell another component like a transistor or an actuator or a solar cell expecting that the phone would ring um, and there would be a huge demand for this. But it doesn't necessarily, of course, turn out like that. And that's because in many cases, these are not just replacing what's there. And that can be quite hard to do if the incumbent technology is already mature and therefore uh, you know, fairly high performance and low cost. Um, in many cases, these are doing new things that weren't feasible before. And so over the years since then, while I think they're still great on balance, that there's not enough integrators, um, and people coming up with creative new products overall that, that are desirable. We have seen a number of companies within the industry, and here are just a few samples of those, um, decide to move through the value chain and become more than a component provider and fill this void. So examples include uh, companies who've made flexible batteries uh, for many years, they've struggled to sell that because a coin cell battery is cheaper. Um, and so they have shown that actually there's a large market for it, things like uh, flexible skin patches for temperature monitoring, where a coin cell battery would be uncomfortable for, and that people are willing to pay the slight extra amount of money for that increased comfort. And also it's easier to dispose of as well. And so companies have turned away from being a core component provider to being much more of a solution provider. And that does bring um, other challenges. You, know, you might move from a B2B company to a B2C company, but these companies are showing they've got to uh, prove and demonstrate and build the market themselves. And of course, um, some of the companies listed here are doing that in different ways with different components, uh, but Invisible are also one of those companies doing that, taking electrochromic displays beyond just offering a display itself, but also looking at complete systems where they can be used. And showing, um, different types of systems and selling demonstration kits, I think is a good way for uh, that to spark ideas as to how they can use these, uh, different companies can use these technologies to create different um, products and, uh, and therefore markets. So that was my overview. Um, for more information about ID Tech X, we provide a lot of data uh, behind this, covering many different sectors. So do take a look at our website, idtechx.com, and do contact us as well if you have any uh, questions uh, beyond the, the time we have in this webinar. So that's my part and thanks very much for listening to that. Thank you, Raghu, for taking the time and joining us. I would like now to introduce Dr. Carlos Pinheiro, Invisible Chief Technology Officer, live from Freiburg, Germany. Carlos, can you provide us an update on the recent technology and R&D highlights that are happening in the Smart Materials Lab? Hello, Alicia, certainly. But please just allow me to add a few lines about myself. Um, I have already 15 years uh, of experience in this field of uh, smart materials. Um, I first contacted with this technology uh, during my PhD program. And uh, since then, I immediately knew that I wanted to work with Invisible and build this, um, <clears throat> this technology. And since then, I am being quite devoted uh, to bring this into 
uh, applications. Uh, and I'm very happy to see how we have been growing and now we are sitting here uh, giving you uh, an overview on our activities. Uh, yes, we are based in uh, Freiburg, this is southwest of Germany, um, where we have our laboratories uh, dedicated to developing uh, new materials uh, for electrochromics. Um, Freiburg is at the edge uh, between, uh, uh, in Germany, between France and Switzerland. We have a very strong ecosystem from the chemical industry, but as well from specialty printing uh, companies. Uh, the largest uh, machinery producer or manufacturers of printing uh, are German. And so it's, uh, it's been, a, been a quite good experience uh, being here and exposed to this ecosystem that uh, it's uh, being for us uh, in order to develop our materials and inks uh, a very, a very interesting and, and it has been a learning uh, as well. Um, Smart Materials, it's a brand name we use internally to uh, indicate or to define all the activities we do in terms of development, technology development. And our main mission is, and I just forgot to share my screen with you, uh, just one second. Our main mission here at Smart Materials is to create um, the technology for the next generations of our products. As Yanni already mentioned, we do have already existing products, uh, the ink kits for designers. Uh, this has been giving us very valuable feedback uh, from uh, the users um, regarding how to handle these materials and how to use it in prototyping of electrochromic devices. Um, and we are listening to this um, feedback and at the same time, we're also looking to fundamental pillars in our developments looking to develop new features in electrochromics like uh, colored uh, printed displays. We're also looking into a seamless integration um, of this technology in our environment. Um, we're also very, very um, dedicated to sustainability. Um, and I will show you one slide uh, with some results uh, we are getting in a large consortium working on uh, paper electronics. Um, and uh, together in parallel, we're also building the tools for the designers uh, and everyone that is actually creating the new products and the new generation of products using these uh, new technologies. Um, and in combination with all these factors, our main mission here is to develop uh, invisible product platform based on uh, ink technology. One highlight uh, of our developments and also collaborations, uh, certainly we would never dare to take this challenge by our own and we do share and appreciate to build partnerships. And this is one example. Uh, we, um, we announced recently our collaboration with NXN. There in this setup, we have access to world-class materials uh, that have been developed for many years at the uh, John Reynolds Group at Georgia Tech. Uh, he has been a great and a fantastic job creating new electrochromic polymers. And uh, Invisible's role is to take those materials and to incorporate in our inks and develop further the ways that these new innovative chemistries can be used and scaled up to um, applications. And based, uh, you can see in the middle of the slide, there's uh, a real prototype where you can see an electrochromic device switching from blue to magenta. And uh, these demonstrations and demonstrators we have built uh, have already uh, resulted in this uh, customer project uh, where we are developing together with NXN um, a prototype for a medical, um, a medical device. Um, regarding sustainability, very briefly, we are engaging with a large European consortium uh, devoted to develop printed uh, electronics on, on paper substrate, but also to integrate uh, cellulose materials inside the inks. It's not just the approach on having a, a more sustainable substrate, substituting plastic, but also um, substituting chemicals with uh, nature, natural based uh, materials like cellulose. Uh, here you see an example uh, of a demonstrator we built together with Guarro Casas, a, a specialty paper company. Uh, where you see a printed antenna on paper substrate and uh, invisible uh, printed electrochromic display. That can be used without any battery because the antennas are resting energy from the smartphone. Um, 
just to highlight that uh, in this project, our target is to shift this uh, electronic waste that is um, mainly burned worldwide and, and just a, a small percentage is collected to shift that electronics to the paper recycling system, which in Europe, it's already have a collection rate of 80%. If we can achieve that, I think this will be a very uh, breakthrough in getting more sustainable electronic and printed electronic components. Finally, um, I want to talk about the experience we have had within uh, another large European consortium called Decochrom, where we have been exposing uh, uh, to a wider audience to these new materials, uh, and in particular, electrochromic displays. We have uh, teach designers how to use our inks, and then we have provide them with our ink kits. Uh, and then we just provided uh, one A4 size sheet with some bullet point instructions, and we didn't that told them anything else. We just wanted themselves to learn how to use, to implement their ideas. And uh, it has been very rewarding experience where uh, designers have uh, eagerly got uh, and, and uh, adopt this technology to create their ideas and concepts. Um, and now we have a, a, um, a wider um, group of ambassadors of the technology, as Yanni mentioned, these designers are now giving workshops to students at universities and also to children how to use electrochromics and also to use this as an educational tool. Uh, very interesting also is to see and, and to learn how the designers see the use uh, of electrochromics. And, and this is certainly beyond what us as engineers can, uh, can imagine. Uh, so this, this was uh, what I wanted to share with you, uh, a little bit of the highlights in our developments. Um, and I will be available for any questions if you have at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. That was very informative. Um, now I would like to introduce our co-founder, Dr. Inesh Henriques and CEO of Invisible. Ines will be providing an overview of the recent operational highlights at Invisible's customer solutions in Charneca de Cabrica in Portugal. Hello everyone uh, and welcome again to Portugal, which is where I am based and where I am uh, broadcasting today. Um, as Alicia said, I am the Chief Operating Officer of Invisible and have been with the company since its very founding. Um, so Carlos and I have been here for a while. It's been a wild ride, um, certainly many stories to tell and uh, very interesting learning experiences. Um, with me here also is Petteri Stromberg, um, our Head of Product uh, Management. Um, and he's going to briefly introduce himself. I'm just going to step away so that we keep a safe distance. Hey, good morning to the Americas and afternoon and evening elsewhere. I, my name is uh, Peter Stromberg. And as Ines said, I'm uh, working as the head of product management at, at Invisible. I haven't been here for a long, long time, but I have uh, long background in, in new technologies and bringing those to the marketplace and in customer interfaces and things like that. So my past 20 years more or less went with RFID technology. So just wanted to say a quick hi and uh, I'll let Ines get back to it. Thank you. Thank you, Petteri. Um, yeah, so Petteri will also be uh, available for, for later uh, question and answer the later question and answer session at the end. Um, so we're, as I said, we're located in Portugal. This is where Invisible started uh, and we are a customer solution center. So let me share my screen with you. Can you see it? Yes? All right. So I, um, Yanni has said a few things, Carlos has said a lot of things as well. I'm trying, I'm going to try not to repeat a lot of the messages that you've heard already. 
uh, but I wanted to highlight that here uh, in Portugal from our customer solution center, we basically focus on clients and how to deliver solutions to clients. Uh, so how to meet clients' expectations and needs with our technology. From the very start, we understood that we needed uh, expertise and a multidisciplinary team uh, that could really deliver solutions and not only a chemical device, which is what our printed electrochromic display is. So we have a group of designers, uh, chemists, electronics engineers, production experts that really bring it all together to offer final solutions to, uh, to clients. And this is also what Ragu has said is really important for companies in printed electronics to be doing um, in these times. And that's what we focus on uh, here in, in, in Lisbon, Portugal. So uh, we have this multidisciplinary team. We offer a full uh, package of different services from idea to prototyping to uh, small, medium volume production. And then when the cases get to the point where a higher volume production is needed, we, we pass it on to, to our, our team in Sweden from whom we're going to hear today as well from Tommy. So, as, and as, as we've already heard as well, uh, our current model is to offer these services, but we want to evolve into a model that really uh, leads to the global adoption of, of our technology and, and to that. And that's why we hired Petteri and that's why we are focused more on products and, and in developing inks, materials, design tools, and also quality control tools that we can offer to uh, different production partners around the world. Um, so our facilities here in Portugal um, look like this. I'm actually going to try to take you to take a glance at what our team is doing right now. So I'm in the office space, but I, oh, oh I need to take off my cable. <laughs> All right, let's see. I actually initially thought that we could broadcast this from the production floor, uh, but they are working on a confidential customer project right now. They're busy, I didn't want to interrupt that. And it's noisy. So, I hope you can see. We have... This is our production floor. Let me close this. Um, so really the main message here is that we use uh, conventional standard uh, print house conditions and also quite standard uh, printing and converting equipment in, in, in these facilities. And this is why we believe that this technology is truly mass scalable. Uh, that is our intention. And one of our, the goals here from our team in Portugal is also to be able to provide training and uh, tech transfer services to print houses around the world that want to start producing our technology. Okay, so one of the examples that we uh, can actually talk about, most of our cases are confidential, unfortunately, but one of the examples we can, we can uh, talk about is our collaboration with Ivonik, which you've heard already about a little bit. Uh, but this is a, a really good example of the work we do here every day. So basically what we did here was match two printable technologies um, and, and really demonstrate that they can be printed together, manufactured together into a flexible and thin form factor. So Ivonik has this printed battery, rechargeable battery technology that can be coupled with invisible displays to, to be applied, for example, in smart labels. The thin and flexible form factor really allows for, that, uh, for those types of applications. Here's a small video. Um, just one more feature of this technology is that it's uh, not only rechargeable, but also very sustainable and, and green, um, and also solid state, both technologies are. So, and this is a, a very good example of also how uh, these different capabilities are needed to build really final solutions and not only a single display that can can't do a lot by itself. 
All right. The other uh, task that we do daily from, from these facilities is really to ship both ink kits and display kits. You've heard about these already uh, from the other speakers. Um, what I'd like to say is that uh, we, we've really seen a huge increase in interest from these kits from the market this year. I can give you uh, a very generic number. Um, so in the first quarter this year, we've sold uh, we sold the same amount of, of display kits that we sold in the entire year of 2019. So we're really seeing, uh, although that doesn't represent a very significant revenue, we're really seeing an increased interest from the market. And, and these kits are, are really uh, an easy way to get started with the technology and to disseminate it to as many people, as many potential clients as, as uh, possible. And, and this is, again, a daily task uh, for our team here, uh, here in Portugal. You've seen this slide already. Um, Yanni has talked about the impact of COVID uh, on our activities. I'd like just to, to add that uh, one, uh, one of the main messages is that we've been, uh, we've been able to keep the team all healthy and operational. We haven't um, closed doors. Uh, but we've done it in a safe way. So everyone, um, everyone is working uh, with, with their masks and safety conditions, with the right safety conditions. And, uh, and we're open for business. In, in, in fact, uh, we've seen an increase in the interest that our technology has had in the past few weeks. People are not so busy traveling so they actually can work uh, more effectively. Um, and that has been, uh, that has been definitely a very positive sign for us. So just wanted to highlight that as well. And, um, and that's it. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Uh, we're now going to hear more uh, from Tommy, who is going to show us the next step in a, in a uh, uh, Thank you, Ines. Next is Tommy. Glenn, VP of Sales and Marketing from Invisible Production in Linköping, Sweden, providing us an update on what's been happening in our sales and marketing of printed electrochromatics and the roll-to-roll -roll printing activities for clients. I have to say, I love looking and seeing our production facilities in, Lin in Linköping and in um, Charneka. It's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ines. Uh, um, and thank you, Felicia. Uh, Tommy Hoglund, and I'm the Vice President for Sales and Marketing here at Invisible since uh, November 2019. So it's around eight months now that I've been working for Invisible and it has been a, a great time and uh, looking forward to, to keep doing this for for some time. Uh, eight months might, might sound like a bit short working with printed electronics and electrochromic displays, but I, I have actually worked with the printed electronics before joining Invisible. I was part of the, of the team that started up uh, Consensum production that the Invisible acquired in, in 2019. And I've also been working as the manager for the printed electronics arena, that is the innovation cluster of, uh, of the printed electronics in, in Sweden for this Swedish Research Institute Prize. Um, so, so I have some, some background. And uh, as highlighted before by previous speakers, our business model really allows us to help companies no matter what maturity stage they are at. We can help you with ideation, up to prototyping, and then here also now full-scale roll-to-roll production moving into to high volumes. So this is what I'm going to highlight a bit, our uh, capabilities to go into roll-to-roll. -roll. As you can see behind me, you see our printing equipment uh, here. It's um, a Kronet line where we have both screen printing, flexo printing, 
slot die and gravure. And we actually use all of the, the printing methods in our daily work here. And um, our offer and what we bring in to Invisible is really the scale up capabilities. So we can go from a few samples to making millions, literally millions of displays. And I'm just showing you here, I hope you can see this. This, this is on road, but this is just a part of a big road that is usually this wide. So you can imagine the, the capabilities that we now have ready at Invisible. But it's not only uh, electrochromic display that we actually offer to, to produce here. We also offer to produce other printed electronic components and systems that Raghu talked about and, and showed how important it is to turn this into systems to create a fully functional product. And it's not just printing, we actually also offer testing. So we have roll to roll testing capabilities where we go down and electrically test every component as well as also optical. So we can have a really high quality control of everything that comes out from our production. And then we also have a converting uh, step where we can slip uh, and kiss cut uh, into single track rolls or, or single products as well, depending on how the customer wants uh, this to be delivered. And systems we were talking about. I think the invisible temperature label is a perfect example of a functional system that is actually a real product. It looks like this. And it's based, based on a, a, a setting of different components. And this is how it looks like without the cover. So you can see that we really combine these different components as an integrator together with partners in our network to create a fully functional product. And this is an illustration of how this can be done. But you start with a substrate, print some silver conductors, put on a carbon, electrolyte, and then the electrochromic layer. And there you have uh, the display. And if you want, also print a mask onto it to create the pattern in the roll to roll line. Then you can assemble also other components like sensors and uh, microcontroller units and so to create the intelligence that you might need and also fix some type of power source. In the example of Evonik, this one could even be printed actually, the battery. And then the graphical overlay and you have a complete product. So I think this is how Invisible production contributes to the complete offering that Invisible now have to, to customers. And I would like to talk a bit about our sales also, that we do see an effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we have had some projects and uh, products that have been postponed due to this. But we, I think we, we had a lot of plans in the beginning of the year, as Jan and Mikkel said, uh, to go to different events and shows. But we adopted really quick to the new situation. And we were one of the first actors in the printed electronic community that went out and uh, made the webinars. And we have now actually seen an increase in the number of inquiries and requests. Yes, as, as um, Ines showed, uh, we have had an a increase in the sales when it comes to our display kits uh, and our ink kits as well. So we, we see, still see this race. And compared to last year's sales on, on 300,000 Canadian, uh, we have put our internal target to go above a million Canadian dollars this year. So this is a target for this year and, and we see positive signs. I'll give you some examples of the production services that we offer also to, to some of our customers. And Epishine is one important customer for us here in, in Sweden, uh, where we have proven that their organic solar cell actually also can function as the, the power source for our display technology. And this was also highlighted in the 
organic and printed electronics journal uh, in, uh, in November last year. And here is another example of an integrated system product together with the EpiShine's organic photovoltaics as the power source. So it's a system that combines the solar cell, our display technology, and also a moisture sensor. And these type of products, I believe we will see a, a, a growth of even this year, where you have a combination of, of this. And then we produce also a, a printed humidity sensor for Invisense in our production line here. And it's for the construction industry to measure moisture inside the wall without harming it in any way, wirelessly. And then an important thing for the sales at Invisible is that we acquired the business of RDOT and that was presented in, in May this year. And this really offers a huge in, uh, enhancement of our sales capabilities because uh, RDOT has really skilled uh, co-workers, Felix and Philip, that knows the electrochromic display technology and has a really good uh, know-how, how to explain it and discuss it with customers and understand how this display technology should be integrated uh, into systems. And this is uh, as their display technology that they also bring into to Invisible Now that we work more and more with these type of seven segments uh, displays to show um, information in different type of, of applications. So we, we see an increase in requests and the, and the um, inquiries. And we have a very positive feeling of the, the, uh, the sales and the growth of the sales this year. And um, we, I see it as this is the, a bit of the breakthrough for printed electrochromics and we then urge everybody to step on this train now and, and follow us. So that was all from, from Lynn Chapping. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy. And now it's with great pleasure that I introduce our newest board members, Leif Longquist and Michael Robinson. We're excited to welcome you to the Invisible team as you bring diversity and value to our board. Now, could you please provide a brief introduction for us and why you chose to join the board? Thanks, Alicia. Um, maybe I'll take a, I'll take a lead here, uh, Leif. Um, we're the ones keeping you, if you're in the East Coast, uh, fr from lunch. Um, but no, no presentations, just us. So uh, just int to introduce myself, I'm Michael Robinson, uh, one of the newer, newest members of the board, uh, joined last year in November. Um, my background is actually in industrial design. So um, I, I get really excited about products, designing products, and I think Invisible is uh, an amazing organization. I'll get more into that as we talk. Um, but my background is in product innovation, design, development, and manufacturing, uh, mostly in mass, uh, so consumer packaged goods. Um, but really, um, I'm excited about my role uh, at Invisible. One, uh, to learn about this amazing technology. Two, to, to be a coach. Uh, as you've heard, um, Invisible is really poised to bring products to market, to transform this technology into the marketplace. So being able to help coach a team with that experience and best practice. And then third is to constantly be amazed and in awe. I think what you're seeing here is the team's ability to be agile. Uh, we're, in, we're all spread, spread around the world, but you're getting a real feel for who we are and what we do. Um, and, and really making those things visible. Uh, so um, that's an introduction to me. Over to you, Leif. Yeah, Leif Jönkvist is my name. Uh, I've been part of the development of electrochromic displays since 2002, actually, at RISE, the Research Institute in Sweden. Uh, 
I eventually became the vice president for, for RISE uh, and the ICT division. But I also been participating in quite a lot of startups uh, here in, in Sweden as a CEO or a director of board and also shared one, one listed company uh, coming from a startup position, making it possible to, to, to create new products. And I'm pretty amazed by, by the efforts that Invisible has taken coming to, to introducing uh, printed electronics and printed electronic systems, especially electrochromic displays uh, on the world market. I mean, the, 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 the customer-based company has presently is global and, and, and we actually works with, with uh, all parts of the world. And I'm, I'm, I'm astonished by the, the energy uh, that, that uh, the people actually show when, when working around the clock with, with uh, customers in Asia, Europe, and, and also uh, United States. Absolutely. I'm, I'm super excited about uh, the recent uh, collaborations with RDOT and the ability to really expand Invisible's reach um, and meet the customers. I think this is, I think Raghu and uh, Inej have really spoken to uh, in these COVID times, we've really had to shift and be more agile as we engage our customers. And I think bringing on RDOT, helping to expand our sales capabilities, as well as to bring that real entrepreneurial, young, online native marketing mindset to the table is what's really going to accelerate our growth uh, moving forward. Not to mention, I think what you've already heard, uh, we're vertically integrated. This is rare to have uh, that um, capability uh, in such a young company to be able to go from concept all the way to scale production. Um, we're really set up for success. And of course, the, and, and in the near future now, the goal must be to, to focus on sales and also finding long-term uh, investors that can, can uh, also develop the company into its rightful place as the world-leading electrochromic uh, display company. And Absolutely. Oh. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, is, is this how you see Invisible's business evolving in the next two to three years? I think that's exactly it. So I, I um, really invisible is it has so many things going for it. One, an amazing ecosystem of partners. I think what you saw and heard Yanni walk through is just a taste of the partners that he was able to bring to the table. Raghu Das joining us from ID TechX, another example of the ecosystem of partners that really uh, bring strength to uh, Invisible's ability to transform into market. Um, to, to Leif's point uh, about our future, I mean, I'm a brand owner, customer, right? So my, my, I work in CPG. Uh, I've worked with Colgate Palmolive. Currently, I work at L'Oreal. But, you know, I don't, with these emerging technologies, often I don't know what it is I want yet. But what Invisible does very well is they help define those need gaps for customers by listening. And Carlos said this about our electronic, our, our ink kits, by putting the tools in the hands of the customers and then listening, understanding how they're using those tools, how they're filling their own need gaps, helps us deliver uh, value added products and services to the customers as well. Yeah, but it's also, I think, very important that uh, we can support the customers with the uh, design, electri electric, electrical design and, and also the system knowledge, uh, because that's the way to, to help customers that, uh, like yourself, might not be the electronic uh, customer and that they could uh, handle those things themselves. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your day to come and join us on this webinar. So thank you. Well, thank you for everyone for joining. Um, and so we're just gonna have some questions. 
Uh, sorry if we're going a little bit over today. So I'll just give a couple questions out that we've had. Just wondering what your main niche will be to persuade potential customers, both optimistic and ones who may feel that it is a bad investment. To anyone. Can you really show, repeat that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. The question is just wondering what your main niche will be to persuade potential customers consumers, both optimistic and ones who may feel this is a bad investment. Mm. All right, uh, so as I, as I uh, mentioned briefly, we are starting in three main sectors. One is uh, retail and logistics, the smart label applications. And there we highlighted the collaboration with Identu and getting, getting our technology as a visual indicator to these smart labels that detect temperature in, in Identiv's case. Um, clearly a lead case in that sector. We're working with premium consumer brands. Unfortunately, I'm not able to drop any names, but the beauty of those collaborations is that they have a product vision and they come to us uh, so that we can help them realize that. Um, Today we can start publishing those. I think that'll help convince quite a lot of people of, of what's in store with, with what we have to offer. Um, and then of course, it's come up several times, healthcare sector. I saw that there was a question on where are we, where are we in, in competition with other technologies? I would say that in the diagnostics healthcare sector, they have needs on diagnostic devices, um, uh, wearable devices to display information. And there they might use uh, LED lights, they might use conventional LCD displays. We are now equipped, thanks in part to the RDOT uh, edition collaborations there in Sweden, to, to begin replacing LCD displays. Uh, last spring, we announced we had one client who specifically approached us with the need of taking the high power consuming LCD display and, and um, developing our electrochromic um, to replace that. Well, Hopefully, some ideas. Yeah. Thank you, Yanni. The next one is for Raghu Das. Uh, the question is, do you think PE industry is only focusing on part research that complete product? Then complete product. Certainly, that might that might be the problem in commercialization of this technology. What is your take on this? So, I think initially it was very focused on research, and it had to be because a lot of investment had to be made in developing materials to enable components that were good enough for different products, and that took a lot of time and a lot of money. Uh, but I think you know that was. Um, you know, the first 10 years, say, where a huge amount of money went into this material and process development. Over the last five, maybe 10 years, uh, we are definitely seeing a change. These products are now ready, they have capabilities, and it's now a case of, you know, marrying them into the right product. But still, I think the industry have found that there aren't enough people who um, maybe are educated about the different capabilities, so they're not necessarily demanding it. So some companies are going out to create product, become more vertical, to show what are the new things that these capabilities and components can do. So as I showed in my presentation, we are seeing companies now move to be much more commercialization focused, moving away from research. Another indicator of that is just the investment grants we see, for example, within the EU, where they used to be mainly around fundamental research, but certainly over you know, the last five plus years, we've seen that investment change to focusing on how can now companies commercialize technology. So, it's changed research to a much greater focus on commercialization. Well, perfect. Thank you very much. Now, the, the last question we'll have, it's for Carlos. Will Invisible be able to develop a GUV sensing chemistry to the very broad 100 to 300 radiation spectrum to take advantage of the emerging opportunities for GUV applications around the world today? I think I have problems in the connection, Alicia. Oh, do you want me to re-say it? No, I'm joking. Oh, you. okay. <laughs> you got me there, didn't that you? That was a quite, quite, specific, uh, quite specific question. So, uh, um, you say GVU? 
Yeah, the GUV um, will invisibly be able to develop a GUV sensing chemistry for the very broad 100 to 300 radiation spectrum to take advantage of the emerging opportunities for GUV applications around the world today. Okay. Yeah, I think that that relates with what uh, Haguda said, and we were talking about the new opportunities brought by COVID. Um, so I, I think this is uh, using UV irradiation to, uh, as a germicide uh, to sterilize surfaces. And uh, we, are not, we are not developing any chemistry that can uh, sense uh, UV light or measure UV light or the doses of UV light. But um, we have been already contacted by companies that have electronic sensors um, to combine with our displays to provide the information of the sensor. So we are not developing a chemistry to sense UV light, but we are working with companies to integrate the display as a visual output for the electronic sensor for the UV light. Perfect. Thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for coming today. This concludes the question and answer session. Thank you for everyone for participating once again. And after the webinar is finished, um, there will be a post survey. Please fill it out. And in order to improve our next webinar series, please feel very free to reach out to the investor relations team at ir at invisible.com if you have any further questions. And by the way, Invisible is honored. Let me just share the screen for a second. Bear with me. Alicia, before, before going there, um, um, I would also like to very quickly thank uh, all the participants, um, the audience. Uh, great to see that you stayed this, this hour and a half. A big thank you to Rakudas for sharing your, your, your insights on the market. Thank you. And, and, and the team, board members included. I don't know if it's wrong to say, but I love you guys. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Yanni. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ragudas. Thank you, everyone. I just need thank you. Help. And Alicia, please share. Oh, sorry. Uh, if there are any investors interested, we are listed. And, yes, um, I, I, just yes. let me, let, I'm almost finished. Let me, let, <laughs> let me just finish everything. Um, Invisible is honored to be hosting the Printosent Printed Intelligence Commercialization Webinar Series. The next webinar is called Health and Medical Everywhere With You. This session will look at how printed intelligence is impacting healthcare with solutions for rapid diagnostics, wearable devices, and smart patch patches, and much, much more. The registration is on the printer. PrintoSense website. And we at Invisible, if you have anything else, please feel free, free, free to contact me at invisible at ir at invisible.com. And my phone number is there, 778 683 4324. We're also listed once again on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture Board, the OTCQB, and the Frankfurt Exchange. I also have put in the chat all our links to our social media channels. Please feel free to follow us and comment because that's where we send out most of our news all the time. And also please subscribe to our mailing list. We would love to hear from you and we would love to talk to you more. Thank you very much for joining us. You can sign off anytime. <laughs>